Why do some people grow faster in life while others seem to struggle even though both start off from the same place? Is there a difference in their mindset or their brains? Turns out there is. So in today's video, I'm going to break down the neuroscience of growth mindset and what can you do to build such a growth mindset. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about your brain and your health. If you've not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Do so, you'll see a lot more such videos on your timeline. So what happens in the brain of someone with a growth mindset? So let's say that you try something new. You're trying to solve a problem. Now, when you solve a problem, your brain's prefrontal cortex is trying to find a solution. And let's say that you do find one solution. Now you try it out and there are two outcomes. Either that solution can work, in which case you will say that you have succeeded, or that solution does not work, in which case you will say that that solution failed. Now in the brain, if that solution has failed, it triggers an area called as the amygdala. Now evolutionarily, every time you succeed in finding a solution, your brain will reward you with a dopamine kick. And that is what you identify as joy or happiness. So you get pleasure when you solve a problem successfully. But on the other side, if you fail to solve a problem, your brain will punish you saying that this is not something you should have done. You should have tried better. So this is what happens when the amygdala gets activated. There is a pain response. You feel suffering because you have failed to solve that problem. Now this pain ultimately tells your brain that whatever it is that you just did, don't do that again. That solution that you tried does not work. So in other words, your brain is saying, don't try this particular solution again because it doesn't work. But unfortunately, what happens is a lot of people take this pain response and assume that because this solution doesn't work, let me not try to solve the problem again. In other words, they give this is what leads to a fixed mindset. Now, what would happen in the same scenario if somebody had a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset? In that case, everything till the amygdala activation remains the same. They tried to solve a problem. They tried a solution. It didn't work. The amygdala got activated and they felt the pain of failure. But this is where the two stories separate. In the case of a growth mindset, that person does not take this to mean that they should stop solving the problem. Instead, they believe that now it is time to find a new solution. Because since the earlier one did not work, let me try and figure out what are the other ways in which I can solve it. And eventually, their prefrontal cortex takes up the problem again, finds a new solution, and after trying again, they might find success, after which they'll get dopamine and they'll get pleasure. This finding a new solution to an old problem is what we call learning or growth. And that is the basis of having a growth mindset. So if I had to summarize step number one in developing a growth mindset, it would be that you need to have curiosity. Curiosity is the urge to find out more. What more can be done? What more is there to figure out? And in many situations, curiosity is the antidote to anxiety. If you are faced with a problem you can't solve, become curious about it. Ask yourself, what more is there in this situation that you are not seeing? Very often, curiosity will make you ask other people, read more, look at the topic in a different way, and that might help your prefrontal cortex find another solution. Step number two in developing a growth mindset is to weaponize regret. Now, this is a controversial take, I know, because a lot of people don't like regretting things. You think that regret is a bad feeling, that you should look at the world with positivity and let the past go. And while this is true, you should also understand that in the brain, when regret happens, regret is your prefrontal cortex looking back at the past to figure out what can be done differently. So what are the changes that you should make in your own behavior? Because you are not entirely happy with the way things have been. In other words, regret is a mechanism that is inbuilt in your brain for improvement. So if you want to grow in life, you should become aware of what are your regrets because regret is your brain's way of telling you that these are the areas that I want to improve in. 
Step number three of building a growth mindset is using your unfair advantages. We all have unfair advantages. Some of you have great memories. Some of you have great friends who have good contacts. Some of you are born in rich families. Some of you have crazy stamina. You can study for 14 hours without stopping. Whatever is your unfair advantage, use it. Look around you, look at your environment and see all the things that can help you achieve your goals better and try to use all of them for your advantage. And the key step here is people. If you surround yourself with people who are also in that growth mindset, who are also trying to achieve the same level of success that you are, it helps you do your stuff better. Because remember that your brain is constantly looking at your environment for cues on how to behave, how to think, what to do. So even what is defined as failure depends on your environment. Because I remember when I was studying for my medical entrance exams, if you fail in your entrance exam, it was considered as a terrible thing. And repeating your entrance exam more than two or three times was an anomaly. But now when I look at people in the startup world, people who are so used to trying, failing, learning and trying again, and I realize these are the ones who really achieve success because they're not afraid of failure. Whereas students giving entrance exams are devastated by the idea of missing out on a rank by a few marks. I cannot stress this enough. The environment that you are in decides what defines failure and what defines success. Step number four in building a growth mindset is gamification. Gamify your growth. Whatever problem you are trying to solve, whether you succeed or whether you fail, understand the level of that problem. If you have succeeded, make sure that you increase the difficulty of the next problem you solve. And if you fail, reduce the level of difficulty. The ideal rule of gamification is that whatever it is you're trying to do, at least one out of four times, you should fail. If you are succeeding in every single attempt, that means that you're playing the game at too easy a level. And if you're failing in every attempt, that means that you've picked too hard a level. Learning to gamify your life and increasing or decreasing the difficulty level is the best way of making sure your brain is constantly motivated to keep on trying. And finally, step number five to build a growth mindset is play the long term game. Remember that in the brain, the limbic system, which is the primitive part of the brain, cannot really think long term. So if you are anxious or if you're afraid of failure, that is a very short term thing because the limbic system is only concerned about here and now. Your prefrontal cortex is what can think long term. What will happen after two years or five years? Even if you're going to the gym and you feel the pain of lifting that heavy weight, that's your limbic system saying, oh no, it's hurting. Your prefrontal cortex knows that if you keep working out, that's what will lead to a healthy body. So play the long-term game to build your growth mindset. Mindset. I hope this video has been useful. If it was, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends and I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone, take care.